Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, interview. Um, I have Steve Daniels from Hype Performance Group, which actually is quite a mouthful to say uh, that I've realised the more I say it, um, I'd like to shorten it to HPG. But regardless, um, this is an interview that we are a couple of weeks ahead of uh, going to Expo, but uh, the guys from HPG are going to be at Expo and we thought we'd get together to talk you through uh, their plans. So without further ado, um, welcome Steve. Thanks for your time today. Hey, thanks for having me, Jordan. No problem. So um, for those people that aren't aware of uh, yourself or Hyper Performance Group, uh, would you like to introduce you uh, and tell the viewers what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like you said, my name is Steve Daniels. Uh, I'm co-founder and managing director of High Performance Group. Um, of course, most people know us from our H135 and our H145. We've also done a hot air balloon. And I think what we're most known for, in, I guess, in the Sim County community is just putting out add-ons that really push the boundaries of you know, what's currently available today in the Sim. Amazing. And uh, so how long have you how long have you been around? Yeah, man. Uh, so we we released our first mod, which was just a freeware mod for the Icon A5 um, company started with me and Dave. Uh, Dave's our lead developer. I kind of handled everything on the support and admin side. But uh, we got together over our love of the Icon A5. We put out a you know kind of a revamp of that, brought over some autopilot functionality and a revised Garmin unit. And kind of from there, we wanted a new challenge and we set our eyes on a helicopter and, you know, we did that freeware H135 and we've been kind of off to the races since then. Oh, amazing. So, uh, so is it still just the two of you or is it a slightly bigger team now? Yeah, so we're a, a team of four. So it's uh, me, Dave, we've also got Tony, um, who's on our art team and GB, who's also on our art team, uh, both great guys as well. And kind of real good synergy between our team. Yeah. So nice and streamlined, only a few of you, which is great, which uh, not not too many arguments over where to take, you know, what 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 to develop next, I imagine, which is great. Yeah, yeah, um, never an argument, you know, uh, <laughs> some heated debate sometimes, you know, we all have our own personal preferences, but it always ends up uh, kind of in the right spot at the end where we all decide on, hey, this is something that, you know, we all like, it's going to bring something new to the sim, and, you know, we think the sim community will enjoy it. Okie dokie. Um, and so, uh, you, obviously, you just mentioned that your um, your initial release was a, a freeware helicopter. Um, and actually, that was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that was before the support of Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator's helicopter flight model. Um, so how challenging was that to bring to uh, the market that really kind of didn't support it at the time? Yeah, it was a it was a very big challenge because you're you're building physics outside of what is available within the sim, you know, currently. Um, again, Dave is our lead developer and he's just incredible at everything he does. Um, you know, it's never really a can it be done with him. It's really just how long will it take to get done and is it worth the effort? So it's great to have him on the team. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a challenge. Um, of course, none of us had prior development experience in a prior flight simulator, not FSX or anything like that. Like we, I think me and Dave both have probably played around with doing our own mods and stuff like that in prior sims, but in terms of building a helicopter or any aircraft from the ground up, uh, not something we had done. But, you know, we learned by trial and error. And, you know, I think because the experience of that is such a challenge, you know, you're, you're running up against brick walls for everything that you want to implement. I think that's only made us better because now we're able to think outside of the box a lot more. And, you know, we're always bringing something new with the products that we put out. And so, obviously, the the support is there now from from uh, the platform. So, how how has that changed in terms of what you can provide, uh, you know, in terms of helicopters or, or the actual product? Yeah, um, you know, it's actually a bit of a challenge. I, I wish I could say we're a, a team where it benefited us greatly. I mean, it's awesome to now have that as part of the base sim because we can build on top of that. But, you know, kind of, and I don't want to get too in the weeds, but there's some challenges with the, the current helicopter flight model. Um, that's why you don't see other helicopters that have autopilot functionalities, um, you know, things of that nature, because there's some, there are some setbacks currently. Um, so we had to still kind of easier than before, but we had to build on top of what was provided, which is how we're able to provide autopilot, and, you know, like our upper mode functions, things of that nature. But um, I, you know, 
and I know you're going to ask me about this later, the, you know, the trailer that came out today, but I have always foreseen that I think that Asobo and Microsoft, they're going to continue to make these, they're going to continue to push the sim forward. Um, you know, they're not one and done. They're not just going to bail out on the community they built up, you know, or I should say rebuilt to greater heights than it has ever been before. Right. Um, so they're not going to leave that audience behind. And we're seeing that, you know, with that trailer that came out today, like they're going to keep putting features and stuff in there. And hopefully the idea is as they do that, it makes it easier for all the teams to, you know, maybe focus on other areas of the aircraft that, you know, we may have had to dedicate to those functions instead in the past. Yeah, well, uh, you know, obviously, um, you've just alluded to it now. So and we may we may as well address it. Um, because, uh, you know, it, it's not just uh, pure aircraft that you that you have, have implemented in the sim. Um, you've taken, uh, you know, uh, say, a, a, an emergency rescue helicopter and built uh, situations and challenges around that. Um, so, you know, was this your initial intention? Or was it, you know, just given the fact that you've done the H? 135 and the h145 and that's typically their uses in the in the real world um almost like the chicken or the egg what kind of came first in terms of an idea was it did you choose those specific helicopters because of their usage and the implementation of the challenges and situations that you've built built in that or was it just a coincidence that that it just kind of snowballed from that um i think it was kind of organic so you kind of even if you go way back to our first mod being the Icon A5, um, we picked that because it's, it's a beautiful plane. You know, it's a beautiful aircraft. It's sporty. It's exciting. You know, something different than you're used to. Um, you know, you've got your Cessnas and your Cirrus and all that kind of stuff. But those light sport, um, you know, aircraft, they're awesome. Um, but anyway, you know, so it kind of goes back to that. We When we looked and said we want to do a helicopter, well, we don't want to just do any old helicopter. We want to do one of the, the best helicopters. We want to do something that's so advanced that, you know, it kind of sets the bar for what other people do. Um, so Airbus, obviously, and then, you know, that H135. It, it's, if it's not the most popular helicopter, it's definitely probably in the top, you know, probably top three um, in terms of like what the community, um, I won't say what the community flies, but what the community would probably think of first if you think helicopters, right? Your Hueys and some of the other stuff too, but um, yeah, so we, we picked that one, um, mostly, mostly because of that foundation of being, okay, there's all these other advanced stuff that we can throw in there as well. After we kind of finish that battle of just getting a helicopter flight model off the ground. And so what were some of the challenges? Cause you know, you've got moving people, you've got the situations, um, you know, there's, there's so much complexity in that. Um, what were some of the challenges when trying to implement those? Yeah, so I mean, moving people is an easy one. There is no, um, you know, Pathfinder AI or anything in the sim currently for that. You know, ground service handling and all that. They they have their complete own infrastructure. Um, there is no infrastructure for humans to have, you know, custom animations or custom movements, paths, and things like that in the sim. So, you know, even that. Um, I hate to use the term hack, but you have to look at the code that's there and say, okay. How can we accomplish this? And we have some creative things that we've done to accomplish pretty much all of those limitations that, you know, at least in this current iteration of the sim, don't exist to give developers that flexibility. You know, if that if it was there, then I think almost every developer would use it because it does add that extra immersion, uh, that extra level of immersion, you know, to your flights when you see loading crew and things like that. And uh, and how do you come up with some of the ideas for the situations? Uh, you know, sometimes. Uh, particularly in, in Northern Canada at the moment, they're, they're experiencing some of the situations that, that sort of you built in there. Um, and it, and you, I suppose you have to be really quite careful of, of what you choose to implement because of their real world um, sort of relations. But, uh, you know, how do you come up with some of those situations? Yeah, um, so it kind of goes back, you know, picking the H135, it was a perfect platform because, again, the, the flight model is so advanced, you can put all these other features in there to kind of show off, you know, the, the advanced features of, aircraft auto hover stuff like that um but then also the other side of it being okay look how many roles is currently used in you know firefighting him search and rescue you know offshore drilling like the list goes on and on so at that point i mean you spend a night on youtube just pulling up your favorite videos and oh that looks cool oh and then you also have to translate like yes this activity looks cool on video but how do you make that fun for the user and for us that was what led to okay um we're not going to create and I won't say we didn't create, but we did do some curated missions like in specific areas, but 
overall, the, the main thing in our head was we have to have this be able to be randomly generated in any area. That way, anyone who picks this up, you know, even if they live completely out in the, you know, out in the wilderness, far away from, you know, uh, like a major city or something like that, they can still generate some type of mission out there. Um, you know, that makes sense. So that was the big thing for us. We want, we always want to drive a reason for people to fly. Um, you know, we're simmers first, you know, we, we started as simmers and we kind of just fell into this thing and now we're, you know, we're doing it, but we also think of ourselves like, okay, what would we enjoy? What would we expect from a developer putting out a certain type of product? And that's kind of how we've come up with a lot of the ideas. And you're right. Um, we are sensitive to stuff like that. You know, um, we hope it comes as a positive spin. It's not a make light of the situation type thing. It's a, it's more of a, just, this is a real world function of the, of these aircraft. And we kind of, we want to celebrate that in the sim. Yeah. And that, that's actually such a really nice way of looking at it. And, you know, the, if you take the amount, the number of uh, real world pilots out there that have started their, their, their flying career doing exactly what we do, flying, flying in the sim, um, you know, you can real take you take a real um, pride in in providing a product that that might spark interest in that, yeah. um, and and I personally love it because it it takes away the thought process of what am I going to fly, where am I going to fly, what am I going to do in the air, and all of that stuff. Because yeah. um, most of my day is probably spent doing that, and uh, and not yeah. enough time flying. So it's a it's a wonderful tool to use. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so we've alluded to uh, the, the trailer for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 that's just been announced uh, at the time of recording, actually, probably about 45 minutes before we, uh, we sat down together. Um, and, uh, you know, you must have had a great, uh, a great impression on the team at Asobo because of, uh, of what you do. And it's um, as soon as I was looking at the trailer, I very much thought that... Um, you know, HPG and, the, and your team had had a real input into into that, whether it's driving Asobo's decision to include it in the next sim, or whether it's a partnership, because I know that Microsoft do, uh, and Microsoft and Asobo do those partnerships. Um, where where does this position uh, HPG uh, in 2024? Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll start by saying we, we don't have any partnership currently with um, Asobo, um, none of the aircraft or Functions shown in the trailer had, were related to us, um, although they might look like us. Um, the other thing too, like I don't, I don't want to say that we are responsible for pushing them in a certain direction or anything. I think it's probably always been in their plans to at some point get the activities. Um, but I do hope maybe we set an example, like some of the things that we would like to see um, is to see, like I was saying, the the randomly generated missions or missions that are not specific to one curated, you know, area. That was one of the complaints with the the super carrier thing, which I still think was a cool add on, but obviously with, you know, they've kind of spoiled us because there's this huge open world and Microsoft flight simulator where you can fly literally anywhere. So people kind of aut automatically want to connect the missions to that. So I, I hope that's something that we see in this upcoming, you know, bringing from them. Um, but in terms of where does that position us, it's kind of, like I said earlier, um, we always hope that the new features that they bring help developers put out better products. So again, if if they have the mission generation piece completely down and our team no longer has to cope that ourselves, then that gives us more time that we can dedicate to another area of the aircraft, you know. Or maybe we can look at what's already in the base and say, okay, how can we expand upon that, you know, again. So that's what we're always gonna do. You know, we're always gonna be looking to push the medium forward um, in what we do. We don't we probably won't be complacent even if they're, you know, if all that hard work is done for us, we're probably still going to say, okay, well, what, how do we put an extra little bit of value in this? Yeah. And, you know, it's, um, that's, that's also a great way of looking at it. You know, if, if some of that infrastructure that, that you guys have, uh, you know, not particularly hacked, but looked at the current code and then, you know, reinvented that, um, yeah, allowing you to really push the envelope in another area. Um, and I know that the, you know, it's very quick in succession, but, uh, you know, if there was another area of, uh, the SIM that you'd like to really push the envelope with, um, is there something that you would look at in the future? Yeah. You know, I, I actually, we've thought about that, but it's mostly been aircraft. Like it's been, cause we associate like the mission so closely with the aircraft. Like there's certain aircraft that are just iconic for like the mission that they complete. So I think we're kind of in that realm right now. Like we're thinking of iconic aircraft to bring. Um, 
in terms of gameplay functionality or simming functionalities, I, I think that a lot of what we want is already come in. Um, we see it in the in the trailer, you know, from today. So it would be more just iterating on that again, like just how can we push that even further? Um, yeah, I'm excited to see where they're going. We, you know, the details are really scarce right now, so it's kind of hard to paint a clear picture of what's coming in mm -hmm. the update. But um, I'm excited to see where that goes. And our team, of course, we're we're not planning on being or going anywhere. We we want to continue uh, living in the sim world and putting out great products. So. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's it just really exciting to see such growth in a particular area. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see where third-party developers really sit within the progress of, of the platform. So it's very exciting. Um, and uh, I can't really wait uh, to see see what everyone does, not just necessarily a Sobo. Um, and then going on to Expo, obviously, uh, at the time of recording, we're not there yet. I'm very excited. And I know that you're attending and you're exhibiting. But what is it that you're going to exhibit to the, the people that do attend Expo? And, uh, and what information could you provide those that aren't attending? Yeah, so um, the big thing for us, so this is our first year doing the expo as a company. Um, we've been to various like aviation events before as like a similar or just an aviation up, but this is our first as a company. Um, we do have a booth set up. We're going to have some free merch available at the booth that people can come by, pick up. We'll have a display showing off all of our aircrafts, um, the different aircraft we have and some trailers. Um, but we we won't be working the booth though. We're going to be out on the floor. We're going to be commingling with the simmers. We want to go to other devs booths. We want to go to different panels. I will be on a panel at the expo as well um, with some great company from the from the sim and developer community. So that's going to be cool. Um, um, but yeah, so for us, we're really trying to take it in as kind of our first one. We want to come and see what it's all about, and then we can plan bigger and better for future years. But I still think we'll have a nice showing um, of all of our aircraft there. Okay, so apart from uh, exhibiting yourself and, and showcasing your products, what is it that you're really excited to go and see or experience or who are the people that you are really looking to go and meet uh, during Expo Weekend? Yeah, um, so uh, me and Sergio are pretty close. We talk, I wouldn't say daily, but we talk pretty often over Discord. Um, he's going to be getting together a group of us helicopter flight sim devs. So I'm kind of excited for that. I would say probably the most meeting some of my peers in the industry talk to them about their, you know, their plans and, you know, other cool aircraft and just kind of nut out on all the, um, all the aviation stuff that we all enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we haven't been in a room, uh, you know, on that scale for, for quite a few years. I know last year was uh, slightly half and half. Um, but again, I'm just really excited to sort of be around lots of, you know, people with very much of the same passion. And uh, yeah, even more so with with uh, people like Sergio who who have that passion in abundance, right? Yeah. Um, so that's really really exciting. Um, Steve, thank you so much for your time. I have really enjoyed our our chat and uh, the prospects of uh, what's on the horizons for for both uh, simulation and uh, the team at HPG. But uh, thank you so much again for your time. Hey, thank you for having me. Apologies, my headphone wanted to fall out there, but no, really, I, I love FS um, Elite. I read you guys daily, so I really appreciate the opportunity to be on for this and can't wait to meet you in person at the Expo. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Not quite looking forward to the very uh, hot and sticky uh, environment, but uh, we'll, we'll persevere. Yeah. Thank you very much.